So this is probably the coolest test gadget you have ever seen. Well, it is acting more like a decor item uh, right now. I present to you a sound activated NVIDIA RTX 4070. So part of the reason I created this channel was to do fun and crazy stuff and have a bit of uh, learning along the way. On usual days, I am I'm talking about software engineering, coding, uh, tech career, uh, cross-platform technologies, layoffs, but today it's all about this guy. How I built it is not much different from how I write softwares. So every great project starts with an idea, right? In the software world, we call that the product requirements document or PRD. It's where you figure out what you want to build. And in my case, it was pretty simple. I wanted to put a GPU on my desk, uh, the cooling fan of which spins when I speak or when I talk. Additionally, I also wanted one power connection and it had to work with any USB-C situation, 100 watts adapter, no problem, regular USB-C, got it. Uh, basically plug and play, power it all. And the motivation? Pure, unadulterated, because I can. I saw my other GPU uh, on my desk in one of the videos I recorded and I thought like, wouldn't it be cool if this was an actual prop on the desk? You know, that classic uh, engineer brain moment. No real practical reason, just the thrill of the build. So first things first, proof of concept, uh, the fail fast philosophy, right? Gotta make sure this crazy idea is even possible before I go all in. This is where things got interesting. By the way, just, just look at it. Looks so beautiful isn't it? Okay, so here's a shopping list, uh, a brain, in my case, uh, an Arduino, but any microcontroller would do. When something to listen, like a sound or a microphone module, then the juice or the power module, this is the key for handling all those different USB-C power situations, uh, a breadboard and wires to hook it all. Well, the circuit itself, uh, surprisingly, it's straightforward. And after a few dry runs, uh, we had liftoff. Testing, mic testing. It seems to be working. Uh, yeah, it is detecting my sound. And yes, it is working. Which takes us to the design. This is where we go from it works to it works beautifully. The goal was to make this thing not just functional, but also, you know, uh, not an eyesore. What's that brother? Let's try to understand the design by looking at some guiding principles here. So the first one uh, is encapsulation. So the first challenge here was the NVIDIA GPU fan that had a proprietary uh, connector. I needed to make it speak a more universal language while keeping things clean and self-contained. Big shout out to the uh, small form factor PC Discord community. These guys are wizards. They hooked me up uh, with the connector documentation and even an adapter which I could purchase uh, through Amazon, which made the soldering process way less uh, explosive, like seriously. Uh, Lifesavers. So the next principle is the open close principle. Another design decision here was the control box, uh, the controller box. I could have just slapped everything onto the GPU, but where's in that? I wanted it to be expandable, open to the future shenanigans that I may have. So the control bar is in its own little house. But this kind of touches the dependency inversion principle as well. Uh, basically, instead of the GPU fan being hardwired to the controller, they both rely on the abstraction, which is the four pin PWM port. And at this point, it's like, uh, sounds like a tech poetry. <laughs> Well, the other design principle was the flexibility. The USB-C situation was a roller coaster. I initially ordered the massive buck converter, uh, which basically trims down the voltage. Then I saw the tiny ones on Amazon only to realize that the USB-C is sneaky. It's not just about the voltage. It's a whole negotiation dance, at least for the modern quick charge adapters. You need a trigger module uh, in the converter itself. I mean, it's better there. This little chip tells the USB-C adapter, hey, I need this much power and the adapter responds accordingly. After spending some time on Amazon, I finally got the one that uh, worked uh, and it was tiny. All right, in order to keep it simple, stupid, I made sure that the circuit is easy to reason about. The fan, microphone, Arduino, uh, all are connected in parallel to the power and just done. All right, implementation time. Let's talk about the challenges. First up, uh, missing parts. Well, had to hunt down a GPU shroud on eBay. It was like an archeological, dig but i found one and uh, turns out i didn't own a soldering iron borrowed one from a colleague oh, thanks mank you are a legend then came the usual suspects wires perforated boards the usual diy chaos let's talk about the code honestly uh, this is the easiest part and let me tell you if you're not using the vs code with the platform io extension for arduino 
you are missing out big time it's a game changer like says well the code itself is uh, is pretty simple uh, there are basically two pins one is the fan pin which is the output one is the sound sensor pin which is the input uh, this function loop gets called uh uh repeatedly after a delay of 10 milliseconds i check if the sound level is beyond a certain threshold and if it is and if the fan is not running i start the fan i also record the time at which the sound was seen and then later i check if there hasn't been any sound received in the last 2.5 seconds and that is when i stop the fan uh otherwise i mean the function will get called again and this thing will uh, keep happening So pretty simple nothing fancy. Okay the other challenge was the voltage and the incomplete circuit. The key here was that the fan's power needs to go directly from the power source should not go through the Arduino. That's what the folks from the PCB community recommended to avoid screwing up the Arduino. And weirdly the fan acted all glitchy until I connected the tack wire to the Arduino. No idea why uh, but hey it works now and it's a mystery like any software project there is some part of the code which is magical which you don't understand and which you probably don't want to deep dive into so it's a mystery it just works and after a few weeks of uh, tinkering a little bit of sweat and maybe a few curse words here is the final result now it looks like it's finally going to be the moment of truth Of course no project is perfect and there's a weird bug where the microphone default sensitivity changes with higher voltage adapters uh, well the voltage should ideally be regulated but yeah it's like a p2 bug and i'm going to live with it it's a feature not a bug but anyway you know how uh, how p2 bugs are addressed right and what what i learned from all this well first current and voltage are no longer just abstract concepts for me i actually fed them then series and parallel connection got it uh are you know coding almost like a check i mean if something interesting comes up in the future related to robotics or are you know i think i might have some experience there then soldering i'm less scared of it i think i can do pretty good soldering now then usb c uh the learning for me is like it's more complicated than uh, you think but at least for like if in the future i'm going to ever work on the consumer tech i know that there is this trigger module thing for usb c all right so uh, there you have it and i like to call it nvidia rtx 4070 desk edition pretty cool huh so all the links to the to all the parts that i used are in the description below uh, and if you're thinking that is this over engineering well maybe but hey <laughs> okay i'll i'll leave you with this thought if there is no over engineering then where's the fun <laughs> so anyway uh thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button is it still spinning it is <laughs> okay all right hello Hi there. It's Black History Month and I'm celebrating by sharing facts. Hey Google. This one. Stop.